Hello guys! Today I will mix traditional art with Photoshop just to show you how you can incorporate a digital image to your traditional artwork without printing and cutting and gluing and all that stuff. I will show you my way of doing it anyway. I haven't really done this before so this will be an interesting and fun experiment. I hope you will enjoy it. This video is sponsored by Graphicstock and I'm gonna try to pick a few images from their website to put into my artwork. I was thinking about something autumn inspired perhaps. I love the autumn and all the colors and all the leaves. So what is graphic stock, you may wonder? It is a stock image website and if you would need a certain image for your project, you can find it here on graphic stock. They have the largest unlimited library of graphics and images, vectors and photos on the internet with over 300,000 pieces of content to choose from. And speaking from my own experience, since I actually use a lot of royalty free photos in my daytime job, most websites charge per image and it can cost all from $10 up to $30, $35 depending on the size you're downloading the image in. But with graphic stock you do get unlimited downloads and with an annual membership plan that only costs $99 you get access to all your images and photos and vectors which there are, as I mentioned before, over 300,000 of. And with the membership there also comes a 100% royalty free agreement which means that you cannot get sued by any copyright holders if you use their images and you can also use their content in any commercial project that you like. So basically what that means is that you won't get into any trouble when using their content and after you downloaded an image you are free to use it as much as you like even if you are not a member anymore. I must also say I've been on a lot of stock photos websites searching for photos to use and overall I am pleased with the quality of graphic stock images even if you can't really choose which size to download the image in which I personally think is a pretty handy option to have you will get a high resolution image and there are also different types of file options to choose from when downloading vectors and illustrations and all your downloads are saved on your account so if you would happen to delete an image by accident from your computer, it is easy to find it again. I personally think that $99 for an annual membership is very affordable considering what one photo can cost, especially if you are using a lot of stock photos like I am. I need about 4 photos every week and if I would have to pay for every single one of them, that would cost way more than $99. But if you just want to try out graphic stock, you can get a 7 days free trial where you can download 140 pieces of content, which isn't that little, so go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube, or to make it a little easier, you can just click the link in the info box below and you will get to the 7 days free trial. Then to the actual drawing, what I first did was making a finer sketch that I scanned to my computer and opened in Photoshop. So my idea was using one image for the hair and one for the background and then just print out the cutouts of the images. Then I will make the rest of the drawing traditionally, so I hope it will make more sense soon. And yes, there are probably a lot easier ways to do this, but since I am not a professional photoshopper, I just did it my own way. If you have a better way of doing this, which you probably have, then please don't listen to me. I made a copy of the base layer with a sketch on it and then I filled in the girl's hair and masked it and cut it out from the sketch layer. So there is basically a hole in my sketch where I could put the images under to see what they looked like and I could move them around and adjust them as I'd like. I went with a watercolor vector for the hair and the leaf pattern for the background and to make it more unified I put the layer of the watercolor vector on top of the leaf pattern and turned the layer into multiply which made the watercolor layer kind of see-through and gave the leaves a nice texture. And the final thing I did was to put the cutouts of the hair and background on a white layer and then I printed them with my jet ink printer on thicker drawing paper. 
And another way you could have done this is to first make the whole drawing and then scan it and edit in the images afterwards. But I wanted to be able to really work with the images on the paper and draw on top of them. You could also just have made the whole drawing in Photoshop or just printed the images and glued them on the drawing. So many options! Now to the traditional part, I also made sure to print the sketch in the exact same size as the print of the hair and background, so they should line up perfectly. I could just have freehanded it if I wanted, but I liked my sketch. And I used the light table to trace the sketch to the drawing paper, but you could also use a computer screen or a window if you don't have a light table. I often use my computer screen since it's much easier to use than moving around my clumsy light table. Then, instead of using a fine liner, I used my trusty old ballpoint pen. It gives a softer look and you can layer it better when doing cross hatching and such. I avoided using more colors since I wanted the stock images to really show through in the drawing, but I gave her some rosy cheeks with watercolors so she wouldn't look so. I also used a Kuretake ink pen for the glasses and a white color pencil for details in the hair and a white Posca pen, so this is really a mixed media drawing. One of the reasons I wanted to do this sponsorship, besides that I use a lot of stock photos myself so I know how helpful a good stock image website can be, is that many people doesn't seem to know that you can't just go on Google and use any picture that you like because of copyright reasons. If you use someone else's photo or image without permission, you can actually get into trouble. Just because there is a picture on Google, it doesn't mean that it is free for you to use however you like, at least not for commercial projects. People have actually stolen my artwork from Google and used it in projects that they have earned money on, and that is not okay, so don't do that. If you want to do a project, be sure to get permission or use royalty-free images. So if you would need photos or images, I would actually honestly recommend graphic stock. And as I said before, if you just want to try it out, there is a link in the description to a 7 days free trial, or just go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube. I have to say that I didn't have that high expectations about this, but I really love how this turned out at the end. I like the effect the images from graphic stock gave the picture, and that it actually feels like the images belong in the drawing. I think this was super fun and I would love to create more drawings like this. Let me know if you would like to see more of them, or I will just make them for myself for fun. So I believe that's all for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it a bit informative and interesting and that you liked the drawing. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and a comment and all that fancy stuff. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!